Fifty Fifty have broken yet another record. According to Spotify, Fifty Fifty currently has more than 35 million monthly listeners. While that's impressive in itself, it seems like they have surpassed Blackpink's record, who recorded 34.1 million monthly listeners in September of last year. Fifty Fifty achieved 30 million monthly listeners on May 7th and have only been growing in numbers and rising in charts since then. Moreover, Cupid also managed to chart on the top 10 of the daily top songs global on Spotify for more than 37 days, which set a brand new record for girl groups and K-pop. Congratulations to 5050 on this incredible achievement. Netflix is gearing up to release an unaired footage of Soli. The captivating short film titled Persona Soli will pay tribute to her. Earlier, netizens noticed that Persona 2 is set to join Netflix's lineup in Brazil on June 16th. The news spread like wildfire and started online conversations and speculations surrounding the release. For those of you who aren't aware, Persona is a short film made by a few directors and just one actor who's the Persona. Originally released on Netflix in April 2019, the first Persona starred Ayu, while Persona 2 featured Soli. Unfortunately, the filming had to be suspended after filming two episodes because of Soli's tragic passing. However, Netflix has still decided to release the part that they filmed. On May 21st, Netflix told Daily Sports that there are discussions taking place on whether to release Persona 2 for streaming on the platform and on what date. Mystic Story, the producers of the series, also released a statement saying that they'll reveal more dates in the future. While happy to see her again, fans sincerely hope that Persona 2 is released with good intentions and crafted with utmost respect for Soli. A netizen wrote, I just hope this is something Soli herself would have wanted to be released. I really hope they handle the interview section and behind the scenes footage with respect, adding that it would be respectful for the producers to donate all the proceeds from the film to a cause that Soli was passionate about, like comfort women, women's rights, or cyber harassment. Karina made an appearance on the latest episode of Lee Young Ji show, where the two discussed many topics, including weight loss. Karina mentioned that despite eating a lot, she maintains her weight by being strict and exercising. She even mentioned instances of consuming large quantities of food, but still managing to lose weight. Karina explained that by wearing padded jackets, tight t-shirts, and sweatsuits while running for hours, she manages to lose her weight just as easily as she gains it. Lee Young Ji chimed in, trying to clarify that Karina genuinely consumes a lot of food without gaining weight easily. However, Karina insisted that she does gain weight but can lose it quickly, saying that she can gain 4 kilograms and lose 4 kilograms in the same day. Lee Young Ji came to the conclusion that Karina's ability to maintain her weight despite eating a lot is attributed to her immense dedication and constant physical activity. But not only did that seem a bit too unbelievable to netizens and fans, but they also grew concerned over Karina's weight loss methods. A fan commented, um, no, that isn't physically possible. If she's talking about fluid loss, that's going to be so dangerous and isn't going to stay off either. Others pointed out just how insane it is that big entertainment companies can very well hire professional chefs and nutritionists so their artists can gain and lose weight healthily. Instead, these companies are letting them eat junk food and then pressuring them to lose that weight, even if it means that the idols adopt unhealthy methods to do so. And Hypen fans are making some strange demands to the group's company, B-Lift Lab. The group has just made their comeback with their fourth mini album, Dark Blood, and the title track, Bite Me, on May 22nd. On the same day, Studio Two released a teaser video for an Hypen's upcoming performance of the song, which left fans dissatisfied. The reason for that is because in the teaser, the members are seen dancing with masked female dancers, which some fans found suggestive. This has made the fandom issue a joint statement on May 23rd, saying that in Hypen is still a relatively young group in the industry, and the members are pretty young themselves, with their average age being 19. The fandom argued that it's way too early into their careers for them to perform what they're calling a suggestive and old choreography. The fans demand demanded that the female dancers be removed from performances, saying that the choreography should only consist of the seven members. At the end, they threatened that they would take additional action if their demands weren't heard or taken into consideration. On May 24th, the fans went as far as to send a truck protest outside of Hype's building with the statement, B-Lift Lab treats fans like fools. It is a company that stands in the way of its artist success. It is a company that has no will for improvement. It is the Hype label with the worst creative sense. Netizens agree with the fans' demands, saying that it's shameless from the company to give the members choreography with female dancers, especially one with suggestive moves. A netizen commented on an online forum, why would fans pay to watch their idols dancing with women on stage? International fans, on the other hand, found the demands completely ridiculous, saying that the Korean part of the fandom has a problem that the Enhypen members are dancing with women, and not because the moves are quote-unquote suggestive. A commenter said, where is the shocking choreography? It seems like the fans are mad that they are dancing with females. Another wrote, I bet the same fans wouldn't have a problem if 
the suggestive dance was performed amongst the members themselves. B-Lift Lab hasn't released a statement on this yet, and we doubt that they ever will. A female fan has accused a bodyguard of NCT Dream of causing her to be physically hurt. On May 23rd, it was announced by the Inton Airport Police that Mr. A, the bodyguard in question, was taken into custody after he was accused of fracturing a fan's rib after pushing her too roughly. The incident in question happened when NCT Dream was passing through Terminal 20 on the third floor of the Inton International Airport. A video was also taken of the incident, and it took no time for it to go viral on all social media platforms. The fan in question had to undergo five weeks of treatment, and she wasted no time filing a complaint with the police against the bodyguard. Upon receiving the complaint, the police conducted an investigation and subsequently referred Mr. A to the court, ensuring that the charges were deemed admissible. However, fans are criticizing the fan in question instead of the bodyguard, saying that the fan had no business mobbing the members at the airport, even calling her a saucing. The comments from fans said, So we can't report saucings to police, but the saucings can report the bodyguards that try to protect the idols? And if she was close enough for the bodyguard to reach her, she was too close. In other NCT news, SM Entertainment announced that Shotaro and Sonchan have officially departed from the group. The agency released a statement on May 24th announcing that the two members, who were planned to debut in NCT's Japanese unit, have left NCT to debut in a new boy group. The boy group is expected to debut in the third quarter of 2023. Shotaro and Songchan debuted as members of NCT in October of 2020 and even participated in the NCT 2020 album Resonance Part 1. It seems like SM thinks that they're a better fit elsewhere. Furthermore, SM expressed its plans to incorporate additional members from different regions into NCT's Japanese unit. This decision signifies the end of NCT's endless expansion and also involves sharing the new unit's creation process with fans. Fans were definitely shocked by the news, but nevertheless had hopes that the two will be treated well in the new group. Shotaro also took the time to write a letter to fans. He acknowledged that the fans may have been surprised by the news, thanking them for cheering them on up to this point. Shotaro expressed happiness at how loved and supported he was when he was promoting, saying, There were fans who told me that they were able to trudge forward and were grateful for my existence. But whenever I hear those words, I gain even more strength. He also took the time to thank the NCT members for treating him like family, showing to be grateful and honored to be able to promote with them. In the end, he said that he would be trying his best after learning so much from promoting with NCT and promised to see everyone soon. As for the future plans of this group and other groups, SM share their detailed plans. The agency released a video introducing these projects as part of SM 3.0. NCT Japan aims to align with regional characteristics of the NCT universe by recruiting more Japanese members. A pre-debut member selection show will be launched in collaboration with a Japanese media agency to form the group. They also talked about the group which Shotaro and Songchan are supposed to debut in. The group will include the two members as well as SM Rookies members Unsok and Songhan, and potentially Korean-American members. And finally, a large rookie girl group is planned for a fourth quarter 2023 debut, featuring trainees revealed during SM Entertainment's open evaluation in March, along with undisclosed trainees. While we're sad to see Shotaro and Songtang go, we can only hope that in this new group, they have the chance to shine and show their talents in the best way possible. We wish them the best of luck. Tell us your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching today's video. Bye!